Hey YouTube, what's up? Milma here again with another Xcode tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to be doing an advanced web view tutorial where we can basically create what's on the screen at the moment. I can go forwards, I can go backwards as you can see here. I can refresh the page, I can stop refreshing if it crashes or something or I can click home and it will take me back to the home page which is Google for this web view. Um, so if you haven't been following along I've already made a tutorial on how to make a web view and you can find that here. Um, so go and watch that if you're not sure what we're doing. However, if you have seen it, let's go on with the tutorial. So uh, open up Xcode. I'm going to open up my web view that's uh, from the desktop, which I made last time. And as you can see, there's our code that we did last time in the view did load. Now, we only need two lines of code for this. It's going to be an action for the home and it's going to be uh, another line of code to load the web view again. So we'll go into the dot h and we'll add an IB action outside the brackets called I don't know refresh. Uh, well spell that wrong refresh. Right? and make sure it's colon id sender like that now once you've done that copy and paste that into the dot h you can paste it anywhere i'm going to put it above the view did load uh, delete the semicolon open open up the two curly brackets and close code to two curly brackets right now this action here is what's going to load our web view so if we just copy or cut this code out of the view did load, so cut it, can command X, and then paste it in here, right? So that's now, when we click that button, it will load this Google. Now, if we go inside the view did load, and we go open square brackets self, now we're going to type in the name of our action, which is refresh, so refresh, and then it's going to be self, uh, colon self like that, close square brackets, semicolon. Now what's this do? What, what this line of code here is doing is going, right, when I load the view, I'm going to do this action. And then this action is the refresh, and that tells it to load the web view. So that's as simple as it is. That's all the coding we'll need. You'll see why when we go over to the interface builder. So if we pop over to interface builder now, and uh, as you can see, we've got our web view from last time but so now what we need is a toolbar to display our buttons so if we go down here and find the toolbar in the library drag it on and uh, put it at the bottom there and make sure you resize your web view so it's just above the tab bar like that now now I've selected the web view you can go over to the web view connections tab and you can see here, this has the received actions, go back, go forward, reload, and stop reloading. Now, not many people know this about a web view, but you don't need to code anything to go back or go forward. It automatically has it in there for you. All we need to do is create the buttons. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to copy and paste these buttons. Oops, copy, paste, paste, paste. And we'll have fifth one because we have five buttons. First one, I'm going to go over to the attributes and change it to rewind for the back. You can also double click in it and type back if you wanted. Then I'm going to go click fast forward for the next one for our forward button. The next one's I'm going to rename it home for our home button. Uh, the next one's going to be our refresh button, so that can be refresh. And the last one's going to be stop refreshing or stop. So now what we need to do, now we've done all them, is click on a web view, go to the connections, and link go back to our back button, go forward to our forward button, reload to our refresh button, and stop loading to our stop loading button. Now the last thing to do is to go into our documents files owner, and connect refresh to our home button. Now to make this look a bit more neat, I'm going to add another uh, button. So paste another one in there. Now I'm going to change its identifier to flexible space and as you can see it's turned out to be like a white arrow and that just makes it look all nice so I'm going to copy and paste that 
and put another one just on the other side of the home and you can see how it spaces it all out. Now don't worry, these won't appear when you finally build a thing, they're just there to make it, to, to push things around and make them look a bit nicer and more evenly spaced out. So uh, now that's done, just save and uh, build and run. And it's succeeded and here's a simulator. And uh, as you can see, Google's loaded with our bar at the bottom there. And uh, if I just search I, and you can see it's loaded and I can go back to Google, I can go forward again, I can click on a link and it takes me to there or I can go back from the link, forward and I can refresh it, see it refreshes there, new advert and uh, if I click home it takes me all the way back to Google again which is our start page so um, there you go guys, there's how you make a web view with forward and back buttons plus refresh um, in my next tutorial, um, I will be going over how to create a search bar so that the user can type in their own URL and uh, go to it by themselves, uh, just like in the Safari app. So uh, you can see that here. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe, and give me a comment on any tutorials you wish me to do or make. See you soon.